Hi everyone! My name is Abby and I am an objects conservator at LACMA. And as an objects conservator, I'm responsible for taking care of all the 3D artwork in the collection. And that means preventing any change or damage to the objects. One way that an object can change is through light damage. Exposure to light can cause the colors of an artwork to fade and become less visible. Light, which comes from the sun or an electrical source, emits energy in the form of wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. And the wavelengths that we're concerned with are ultraviolet or UV, infrared or IR, and visible light. When these wavelengths hit the surface of an object, they can cause damage by causing yellowing or by heating up the object surface, which can cause damage, or by fading the colors. Now UV and IR, they can't be seen by the human eye. So luckily, we can put filters that block these wavelengths from hitting the object surface. But visible light is needed in order to see the artwork, so we can't block it. However, too much of it can be harmful. Now, not all colors are sensitive to fading from visible light. Some colorants, like those made from plants, or felt tip markers, other photographs, ballpoint pens are very sensitive. You probably have some examples in your own home and they will fade quickly. While other colors, like those made from minerals, are not sensitive, like the ones used in the ceramic glaze. And they won't fade at all from light. In order to demonstrate how different colors fade, we're going to make something that I'm calling a color fading checker. By painting different examples of paints and markers that you have at home, and then covering up a portion of it and leaving the other side exposed to light, you're going to be able to see how different colors fade. Isn't that cool? In order to make your color fading checker, you are going to need a sheet of paper, a pair of scissors, a pencil or a pen, a variety of different coloring materials, and tape. Okay, let's begin. Start by folding your sheet of paper in half. And then fold in half again, just on the one side here. And then fold in half one more time, just like that. And this section here is where we're gonna have our window. In order to make the window, cut once along the bottom, not going all the way to the edge there, and then again along the top, and then cut all the way from that line you just cut to the first line you cut, trying to stay straight, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And then there you go. You can unfold it and you have your little window made. Ta da! Your little window made. Ta da! For this next step, if you have a ruler, that would be good. But if you don't have a ruler, you can just use that scrap of paper you cut out from your window, which is what I'm gonna do. And then taking your pencil or your pen, 
I'm actually going to use a marker so you can see it better. Draw a line straight across the sheet of paper. And these are the sections we're going to fill in with the different colors we have. If you don't have any markers or paints, you can actually make your own paint from different food products. There's actually a really cool video on LACMA's YouTube channel, LACMA at Home, that shows how you can make different paints using food. And actually, because those paints are made from natural materials, they're going to be really sensitive to fading from light and are going to make good examples for this project. So make as many sections for as many different colors as you want to try. And then we're going to make a column going from the top of the page to the bottom, like this. And now comes the fun part, you, where you can fill in these different sections, leaving this column blank with your coloring material. I'm going to use this blue marker first. And then once you've filled in that section, we're going to label in the column what color we used and what medium we used. So in this case, we used blue and the medium was a marker. Because we might not remember what we used when we go to look at this later. Used when we go to look at this later. I also made this really cool paint from beet juice which I'm going to show you. It comes into this really beautiful magenta color that I love. And if this is a little too light, you can actually go over it twice once it's dried. And then again, we're going to make sure that we label. So once you've filled in all your sections and all the paint have dried, you fold over your color checker. And the next step we want to do is seal all the edges to stop light from leaking in. So go ahead and grab your tape. If you have a low tack tape, like a blue tape or a painter's tape, that would be the best to use because we're going to have to open this up again. But you can make any tape a low tack tape by pressing it on your clothing tape, by pressing it on your clothing to pick up fibers. And that will make the tape less sticky. So, oh, got some cat hairs in there. Go ahead and tape up your edges tape all the sides, and then label the front so that everyone knows what it is. You can even decorate this if you want to. But most importantly, label the front so we know the date that you put this in the window because the next step once you've finished and here's my finished example is to put this in the window with this face out so this side is exposed to light and then even after one day you can open up your color fading checker and see your different results. When you open up your color fading checker, you're going to see where different colors have faded. The longer you leave your color fading checker in the window, the more fading you're going to see. Some colors will not fade 
as quickly as others or maybe even at all and that's because they're less sensitive. At the museum we use this knowledge to protect artworks by monitoring the gallery spaces to make sure the light levels are acceptable. We may lower the light levels in certain galleries if they have really sensitive artworks in them. And we also may limit the amount of time an artwork is on view in order to prevent the colors from fading. But you can use this knowledge to make beautiful works of art like this. Using your color fading checker as a palette Pick one of your sensitive paints or markers and fill in the background on a sheet of paper and then pick an object that the sun can't penetrate through. I chose a branch from my pepper tree and lay it on top of that sensitive surface and then leave this out in the sun for a day or two and then when you lift off your object, you're going to have a beautiful resistance painting. Pretty cool. So go ahead and use this knowledge to make beautiful works of art. If you have an adult help you share the work and tag at LACMA on social media, then I'll be able to see it. It was so much fun to share conservation knowledge with you. I hope to see you again soon. Bye, thank you.